So I think a lot of people, as they do strength training, forget about breathing. A lot of people or hold their breath for the entire time and they finally, you know, get to the end of eight reps and all of a sudden it's like, <gasps> and then you <laughs> So um, don't do that. Remember to breathe during strength training. But what we're going to talk you through here is actually utilizing the breath to help with your strength training because it can make, particularly if you're doing sort of heavier type lifts, it helps to, one, stabilize everything um, so it actually protects you, but it can mm. really help um, generate some of the force as well. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah. Yeah, I think the main thing to 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 appreciate is that you're most stable when you've taken a maximal inhalation and you've really maximally filled out that internal balloon and you've created maximal intra-abdominal pressure. So when you're lifting heavy, such as less than 10 reps, you want to inhale, heavy inhale into your abdomen to, to get that diaphragm act, diaphragmatic activation happening, activate your core, and then you um, brace your core on top of that. It's like you're going to be punched on the tummy. Um, and then you move. Inhale, brace, and then move. And then you can exhale as you're moving back up out of the squat or the deadlift or the lunge or at the top, either or. But, yep. yeah, definitely inhale before you move and use the in-breath to stabilize you. Mm -hmm. I think that brace phase is important too because I think a lot of people miss that and mm. definitely an important part as you do your strength training. Um, and if you do have any questions on that, let us know. Um, mm. But yeah, an important step to remember as well. So we've got yeah. a bit of a video on the next slide, which really just talks to all of these three phases. So this is actually Mike performing. Um, here we go. So listen to his breath. You'll hear him inhale, then he'll perform the movement, and then you'll actually hear him exhale as he stands back up again. So... Can you turn it up? <laughs> uh. Hopefully, can you hear that? Yeah, I have to do one more on the other side. I can just hear it. But it's all right. It might just be on the thing. Otherwise, we can just post the video as well. We'll post it afterwards as well. So watch it back and, um, mm. yeah beautifully using the breath and just helping to stabilize his, himself before he does the movement and then to get back up again. So mm. just an example of how you'd use those three phases during your strength training. Yeah, and it's not sucking in. Um, a lot of Pilates teachers still teach suck in like you're doing up a pair of pants, which is definitely not what we want, particularly when you're doing heavy lifting. You can't breathe if you're sucking in. It's counterintuitive. What they're coming from with that is because a lot of Pilates from a historical perspective was all about transverse abdominus activation, which is one muscle that helps create that drawing in motion in your abdomen. However, we know now that the core is more than your abs. So we don't want to just focus on the transverse abdominus because you've got a hell of a lot of other guys that all need to come and work as well. Um, and so you're not sucking in actually your breathing into your tummy and the diaphragm's lowering down and you're actually, if anything, it's pushing your stomach out and then you're bracing like you're about to be punched in the stomach. So, so important for pelvic floor health as well, not only for women but for guys. I see a lot of guys with pelvic floor issues too um, because if your diaphragm never comes down, then your diaphragm never ever cues your pelvic floor to do its job. Your, your pelvic floor is there to, to hold up your organs and essentially prevent prolapse or you peeing yourself. Um, but if the diaphragm never comes down, the, the pelvic floor never gets a cue, so it doesn't really know what to do. So a lot of people have this really tight but weak pelvic floor because mm. it's never really asked to do its job well. So sometimes Kegels aren't enough for pelvic floor rehab. Sometimes people have to actually just learn how to breathe better. Um, mm. So, yeah. I was going to say, how would you help people like that? Is that just take them straight back to the breathing basics we were talking about before? 
Some people, if they have um, serious pelvic floor issues, may need to do a little bit of a Kegel before they then do a diaphragmatic breath and then a brace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, for most people, it's just about progressively loading them up to the point where they don't need to do that. So, yeah, it's about just taking some load off really because we don't really, it's, it's sort of cueing the pelvic floor to do two opposite things at once, if mm. that makes sense, because when you do a Kegel, you're shortening the pelvic floor when the role of the pelvic floor is really to be strong under stretch. So it's, it's some people need it. It's, it's very case by case dependent. Um, but for most people, they don't need to do a Kegel when they're doing heavy lifting. Um, and in actual fact, it would be counterproductive to do it. Not everyone, some people do. Um, if you have pelvic floor issues, definitely go get them assessed. It's not normal to pee yourself on the trampoline. It's common, it's not normal. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, um, most people sh yeah, don't need to suck in. We don't want them sucking in when they're doing heavy lifts. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's why they wear a weight belt so you can breathe out into the weight belt. It's designed to cue that bracing out into the weight belt. Yeah, yeah.